If you're totally new to solar, if you've just bought maybe your first foldable solar panel to use while camping, or you're thinking about investing in a full house system where you're getting them fitted to your roof, I'm sure you'll be curious to know how much power you can expect to get from your solar panels. Well, I've been playing around with it for the last kind of year, year and a bit now. Uh, solar, the solar and uh, off-grid energy bug has had me for uh, probably over a year now. And I just kind of test things out, try different panels and just wanted to share some of those, some of that information with you about how much power you can expect. Firstly, let's talk about the actual hardware itself. As a general rule, just to give you a rough figure, I would say if you're, you, if you're getting anything between 75 and 90% of the rated capacity of the panel, you're doing pretty well. 75 would be certainly be the lower side in, uh, in good sunlight, good conditions, and 90% uh, would be absolutely excellent. So why not 100%? If you're going to get a 400 watt panel, why can't you get 400 watts from it? Well, usually it's down to the fact that it's tested under very specific conditions. Most of the time, you'll see written on the documentation that the panel's tested at 25 Celsius with a very specific brightness of light shining on it. And those conditions are just never really possible to achieve. The reason being that, well, if you're thinking about, a, let's say, a summer day and the air temperature could be 25 Celsius, Never mind the actual solar panel when it has sun shining on it, because funnily enough, solar panels are black. They get really, really hot in the sun. So they are never operating, or very rarely operating at 25 Celsius. And therefore, the efficiency of the panel drops off as the temperature increases. So yes, they can theoretically perform and uh, deliver 400 watts, but you're very unlikely to see that kind of output. So why the range? 75 to 90 seems a pretty big range. Well, just different hardware manufacturers produce panels in different ways. They have different efficiencies. And I have, uh, I have one 400 watt panel, so the large type that you might see fitted to a roof. And the best I can get out of that is 350 watts. However, most of the time, when it's sat in the sun, it will achieve 300 watts. It'll do no more than 300 watts. So 75%, which isn't that good really. It's only when the conditions are absolutely perfect and the sun is absolutely spot on angle wise with the panel that that bumps up to 350 watts for a short period of time. The other panels I've got, so uh, some Renergy 175s, the Renergy two, uh, 200, uh, they're a little more forgiving as far as the angle of the sun is concerned, and they'll perform at a higher rating, so a higher percentage of their rated capacity uh, for a longer period of the day. So maybe the manufacturer has just been a little less generous with the rated capacity, and therefore I'm getting a seemingly better experience. Or, yeah, I don't, I'm not, not certain of the reasons, or they're just you know better produced or ma better manufactured. Really don't know, but the, the point I'm trying to make here is that they do vary from manufacturer to manufacturer. So overall, if you're achieving 75 to 90%, be happy with it. The panel I started out with was a foldable Ella Cuenta 100 watt panel. And you can get 90 watts out of that, which is a really good amount. Of course, you've got to have it perfectly positioned, but you can do it. And uh, I always think that's a, a really well, good performing panel. It's just a little thing. It's really portable. I'll put a link to it in the description because I definitely recommend it for anyone who just wants a small panel to charge a small battery. But of course, there's other factors. The solar power goes into a controller and controller design varies. Of course, you've got the old style PWM controllers and the more modern, which is what everyone uses now, MPPT, Maximum PowerPoint Tracking Controllers. And the design of those varies. And then of course, there's the weather. <laughs> let's talk about the weather because obviously you're gonna achieve more power from your solar panel when it's sunny, but let's just talk about various conditions and how much power you can actually expect. Is there any condition when you can expect to get no power from your solar panels. Well, in my experience, there is actually, and I'm not talking about nighttime, because obviously nighttime, you know, the voltage is zero, the current is zero, the panels don't generate energy at nighttime. But during the day, on a very overcast day, and I'm talking thick cloud, the kind of days where it almost feels like you've had some kind of you're in the middle of some nuclear winter or something like that, and you've, you've got the lights on at midday. Those kind of days with that kind of cloud cover 
I sometimes get zero watts from, from the solar panels. I'm absolutely you know, amazed by the fact that it can generate nothing. But on a normal cloudy day, total cloud cover, probably expect about 10%. So if you've got a kilowatt system, you might get 100 watts from it. On a bright cloudy day, so when the clouds are nice and white across the sky, still complete cloud cover, not a single bit of sunshine, but bright cloud cover, maybe 20%, 25%, 200, 250 watts from a 1,000 watt system. That would be a fair expectation. It varies all the time and it, you know, it really does depend, but that's what you could expect. I think as far as a bright sunny day is concerned, a lot of people think that's gonna be best. Not necessarily the case. I think in the UK at least, on bright sunny days, we often get a lot of haze in the air as well. And that actually reduces production. And of course, you've got the issue with the panels heating up quite considerably within the direct sunlight for a long period of time. So yes, you'll be achieving a lot of power and over a lot of time. So across the day, you're gonna get superb results, but you might not necessarily get the highest amount if you're kind of one of these people who are looking and tweaking and testing, and you're looking to see what is the highest amount you're gonna get. You might see it sort of settle down at a slightly lower rate than you might get in one key situation which I'm going to describe to you now. So the best best situation I find with solar is when the when it's when you've got a cloudy cloudy day, a bit of fair weather cloud as uh, as the weather people put it bubbled up into the sky and they're very white fluffy clouds and the sun's behind one of those clouds. So the panel's cooling down, so you've got good conditions as far as the temperature of the panel goes, but the air between the clouds is also incredibly clear. The sky is crisp and blue and when the sun comes out and comes out from behind one of those clouds and is just in that in-between point between the, uh, between the one cloud and the inevitable next cloud that you get. That is when you get your absolute peak production. It will shoot up and you will see the best output from your system that you see at any time. That to me is when I get the best figures. It's when I've seen the panels just produce like almost to factory spec sometimes. You, it can be quite surprising what those power ratings bump up to. They don't usually stay like that for long, again, probably because of the heating of the panels then. Uh, but during those times when you're between, the, in, in the clear air between the clouds, that's when you're gonna get the most. What about winter? Well, winter makes no difference. The solar panels don't care. If you've got a clear day and you've got a good angle on the sun, all the solar panels care about is light and the sun still produces light in the winter just because it's cold outside and it feels like a not a sunny day or not a sort of warm day. Solar doesn't care about that. The problem with winter is you have, in the UK at least, short days. You have worse weather, so you have little time to actually, you have less time to, to actually harvest any energy because of the short days and the worse weather and the angle of the sun changes. So it's unlikely your panels are gonna be optimized for that angle. But if you can, if you are in a portable situation, you've got a portable panel and you can shift them around, you can get some really good results on winter days because the temperature is cooler, the air temperature is cool, the sun will shine on them and the panel will probably be sitting at maybe 15, 20 Celsius. So it's actually a really good harvesting situation. It's just not ideal because you have to do all those changes to your setup. So you're sure there's no better day, there's no better time than a constant sunny day in summer. But hopefully that gives you some idea of what kind of power you can expect to get from your solar panels. <laughs>